Good morning. morning. Welcome everyone to worship at First English this morning on this Rally Sunday. If you didn't notice, the inflatables are not in the parking lot because when the wind gets up to a certain speed, they have to be staked down. And I don't think they're going to be drilling holes in our blacktop, so they moved down to Lake Park. Also reminding the children on your way out today, and parents to remind the children, because if they're like me, they'll forget too, um, there will be people at the doors with the scavenger hunt sheets. So each child is to take one of those along down to the park when they go for Sunday school rally time. Everyone else, is. if you're not going to the park, there is coffee and fellowship downstairs. I can vouch for that. The cookies are really good. So we also welcome those listening this morning by means of our broadcast on KDIO, as well as to our friends at Fairway View who will be listening, worshiping with us by tape. We thank those making the taping possible today. Our radio broadcast is sponsored in honor of Don Teagues on his 88th birthday. Can I say you don't look a day over 82? (laughs) So happy birthday, Don, and it's sponsored by his children, Richard, Elizabeth, Ross, and their families, so we thank them. Uh, We will also, during children's time today, be presenting Bibles to our three-year-olds and third graders. We will also be blessing the backpacks and the school year and anything else you can think of that we should bless today. Uh, Please keep the victims of Hurricane Florence in your prayers, especially uh, Kathy Stoltman's daughter, Michelle, and her grandchildren, Kiera and Xavier, live in that area that is being hit, so keep them in your prayers as well. Adult Bible class will start on September 30th, so two weeks from today, 10.30 in the lounge if you wish to participate in that. Um, We also celebrate today with Caitlin and Andrew Rennie, who were joined in marriage yesterday out at the Glen and Lisa Burdan Farm, so we celebrate with them. Next Sunday, the 23rd, from 2 to 4, you are invited to a special open house in honor of Dennis Schentzel's 80th birthday. He finally gets one with a zero at the end that we'll sing for next Sunday. So, Dennis, you best be here to listen to our harmony. So, uh, Notice the flyer in the bulletin about the food fair. If my schedule works out correctly, I'm even going to bake cookies for it this year, but I'm not going to tell you which ones they are. So you'll have to guess. Uh, Next Sunday, there will also be a fundraiser for the next group going to Haiti during fellowship time. Uh, bulletin, check the bulletin and the website for other announcements and the weekly schedule. Is there anything I'm overlooking this morning? If not, please rise for the greeting and sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment to greet one another. We continue this morning with our order for confession and forgiveness as you find on page 116 in the front of the hymnal. And we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated and we will continue with our entrance hymn, which has been changed to hymn number 595, Jesus Loves Me. Our service continues on page 213. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. this morning, Father, I adore you.
Let me join together in the prayer of the day. O oh God, through suffering and rejection, you bring forth our salvation, and by the glory of the cross, you transform our lives. Grant that for the sake of the gospel, we may turn from the lure of evil, take up our cross, and follow your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading can be found on page 527 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. The image of the servant of the Lord is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant, whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts God's steadfast love. A reading from Isaiah, the 50th chapter, beginning with the fourth verse. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. The word of the Lord. Psalm 116 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the Psalms, the 116th chapter, beginning with the first verse. I love the Lord who has heard my voice. And listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me. Whenever I called. The cords of death entangle me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low and God saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt with you. For you have rescued my life from death my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord. In the land of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading can be found on page 180 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. This text uses various images to illustrate how damaging and hurtful the way we speak to and about others can be. Not only are we to control our speech, but what we say and how we say it is to reflect our faith. A reading from James, the third chapter, beginning with the first verse. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses 
to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and it is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. I invite children to come forward at this time, and if you have a backpack with you, please bring it along. Good morning. Morning. Come on up. You can sit right here by your... Yes, there you go. What? The whole... Church is having a party. The whole church is having a party. You know, that's exactly right. That's what should happen every Sunday morning. The whole church is having a party, especially when we have communion. <laughs> All right, today is a special day, if Amy can find her way up through here. Eventually, we're going to give three-year-olds and third-graders Bibles. So, I've got my Bible. Why do we give you a Bible? Any ideas? Nash, you have an idea why we give you a Bible? Pardon? So you learn about God? Yeah, you learn the stories. Yes? I, I, I had a Bible. I got a Bible when I got baptized, and now I, I, need, and now I need another Bible. That's... That's right. You can never have too many Bibles. Because, you know, like, I like the Bible story about David and Goliath because my name's David. I also like the Christmas story. I like the story about Daniel and the lion's den and the three guys in the fiery furnace and when Jesus feeds 5,000 people and when Jesus is raised from the dead. All of those stories are in the Bible. Any question that you might have, you can probably find the answer somewhere in there. Now, why do we have backpacks up here today? To get, to get blessed, exactly. Now, why would we want to bless backpacks and the school year? What do you think we might pray for when you're at school? To have a good school year, and maybe every day, too, one day at a time that it's a good school year, that you don't get bullied or pushed around or picked on. And what's David's number one rule for school? Be kind, that you can share Jesus' love with your kindness. So we do bless the backpacks today, and we also bless all the teachers and the bus drivers. Why would we want to bless a bus driver? Yes, Livia. Yeah, we want you to be kept safe, and we pray for the cooks, 
We pray for the paras. We even we pray for the books. And above all, we pray for you that you're blessed. So we're going to have a blessing of the backpacks right now. So I'd like you to bow your heads and fold your hands. Today we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by the children gathered here and in our community. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that's been completed, books to be studied, tools to be completed, homework, notebooks, pencils, crayons, rulers, scissors, and other items used for school will find their way in and out of these backpacks. Some days they will be heavy, some days they will be light, but on each day they represent work required of all students. And as we do in all aspects of our life, we bring this before God for blessing at this time. Lord, we ask that you bless the school year. We keep the, that you keep the children safe, help them to have a good learning environment, bless their parents who help them with their homework, bless the teachers, the parents, the cooks, the custodians, the bus drivers, and everyone involved in the school year here at Ortonville and everywhere else. We also ask that you bless those in college or graduate school or those who are just away from home. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, a member of the Board of Education is going to present Bibles. Is that correct? Was that a surprise? Okay, good. <laughs> we don't like surprises. And then Nancy will also, as you leave, and the acolytes will help her, she has a little zipper pull to give you guys for your backpacks. It's a glow-in-the-dark cross. And if you didn't get one last year, she also has a little tag for you to put on your backpack if you don't have one of those. So when we run out, they're gone. I think we've got enough. All right, at this time. All right. On behalf of the Board of Education, we'd like to present the three-year-olds and the third graders with their new Bibles. Um, so first we're going to do the three-year-olds, and we have Landry Wolschlager. And Matthew Wendell. Is Matthew here? Matthew. Maisie K. Malia Carls. And Wiley Bauer. And then our third graders, Amelia Zinski, Justice Whitenable, Meadow Shablin, Chase Lovegren. Kira, Krisa, <laughs> Ava Lee, James Haddonfield, Cameron Anderson, and Lexi Kay. So now, before you go back to your seats, I want you to turn and look out there and say thank you because they're the ones that buy these Bibles for you. So on the count of three, say thank you. One, two, three. Thank you. And you may return to your seats, and we will continue with our special Blessing of the Backpacks hymn, which is... Oh, wait. Time out. Dave forgot already. Nash, I got something for you. And then we will continue with our next hymn.
Please rise if you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In the gospel lesson we just heard this morning, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And then he asked, Who do you say that I am? And the disciples answered with the familiar words, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, or one of the prophets. And then Peter gives that fantastic statement of faith when he says, you are Christ, you are the Messiah. And in some versions, it's the son of the living God. And that is a powerful statement. But today I'd like to do a little different twist on this gospel. And what if Jesus were to ask you today, who do people say that I am? How would you answer? Pardon? God? A guide. How else might you answer? A friend. Yes. The Messiah? Yes. We also call him our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, our Teacher, as we heard, our friend, our guide. There are many things. But now, let's take it one step further. As followers of Jesus, who do people say that we are? Christians, sometimes with a black eye, sometimes without a black eye. Sometimes we practice what we preach. Sometimes we don't do so well at practicing what we preach. But basically, according to Martin Luther, what we are is free. Totally and completely free. We are made free by Jesus by the death and resurrection of Jesus. And in the catechism, it says we are free from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Amen, let's go home, right? <laughs> nope, now we get the rest of the story. We're also free to. We are free to serve the neighbor, free to love the neighbor, free to practice what we preach. We have the cart behind the horse. What we do is a result of what Jesus has done for us. And that's what the book of James tells us. The book of James is basically faith is to be action. It's love as action. It's God's work, our hands. It's what we say in our baptismal vows. We will work and strive for justice and peace for all people. And we do it because we are redeemed and forgiven children of God. Now, our themes for the last three years, I'm not going to give you a test because I had to look back and make sure I knew what they were. Uh, three years ago, our theme was bold love makes all the difference. Now, what is, does bold love look like? Reaching out. It's being willing to do the unpopular. It's love that takes chances. It might reach out to those who are considered unclean, uncool, 
or unlovable. Bold love is doing things for others who can do nothing, absolutely nothing, for you in return. And that's what bold love is, love that we show without expecting reward. And then last year, we quoted the words of Martin Luther, who said, I do it gladly. And we are to do it gladly, because it's thanksgiving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And why? Because we are so blessed. And then we're free to do this. This year, our theme, now we are free to go and do this with gratitude and grace. And gratitude is more than just saying thank you. Gratitude should also be in action. How do we share gratitude? How do we show gratitude? Hard questions for a Sunday morning. Showing up for this, volunteering to help with Rally Sunday, serving coffee downstairs, ushering, greeting, playing the organ, uh, showing up for a children's message, acolyting, all showing gratitude. Singing your praises, showing gratitude. And gratitude is a response. It's a selfless and graceless act. It's our emotion and it's our attitude. And then we get to the word grace. I don't have enough confirmation kids here this morning to pick on, but if they were, they would know the answer to what is the definition of grace. Yes? God's riches at Christ's expense. Yes. Totally undeserved mercy is how we define grace. And we get all that we have, all that we need by grace. Yeah, we earn our paycheck but everything on this planet comes from and belongs to God. It makes me think of that every fall when I see the dust in the fields from combines, which we will see shortly. When we hear crying children in church, that's by the grace of God, and that's all right. Now, if you look at the banners in the balcony, Mrs. Nornis did a fine job on those, and I thank Roger for hanging them. It says, give and go, go, go. Now, they were hung for last week's God work, God's Work Our Hands season. And some, that doesn't mean, all right, give me your money and then go home. All right? That's not what it means. What are some things that we give when we come here to First English? Time, talents, your prayers, your praises. Lee? Yes? We think of all these things. The fellowship are things you give. That's unconditional love and acceptance. Do we have days that we're not like that? Of course. But that's why that word on the cross is so very, very important. Because we do give our praise, our prayers, our hearts, our minds. We give all of this to God. Above all, we give our confession, and then we receive forgiveness. And then we are to go, go, and go. What do we say at the end of the service, Archer? Do we say, go in peace? And what are we supposed to do then? Serve the Lord? Spread the good news? Feed the hungry? All of those things are what we do when we go in peace from this place. Think about last Sunday. I loved walking down Main Street and seeing those messages on the sidewalks and the messages on the cement walls. God loves you. Jesus loves you smile. God is with you. There were some very cool things. I saw people washing windows at Fairway View, and I don't think they got called in for being peeping Toms <laughs> because no one knew they were coming and no one knew what they were doing. Yeah, I would have probably said, missed a spot, missed a spot, and invited them in to do the inside, but that didn't happen. So, um, Pulling weeds for one of our widows, trying to keep creation beautiful by picking up litter, tying those blankets making those muffins, making the dementia kits and the backpacks for kids in foster care. These are all things that we do as giving, but also as we're going. So everything we can do, we are able to do with bold love, and we are able to do it all gladly. And because of the loving grace, that undeserved mercy at Christ's expense, we are able to do it with gratitude and grace. Amen. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. Please rise if you are able.
And with the whole church on earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and we'll continue with our morning offering and our offering him this little light of mine. Please rise if you are able for prayer. Freed by God in Christ to live and to love and to serve, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, you call your church in all its forms and denominations to embody the love that you have shown to us. Raise us up each day to bear witness to your love and hope. Lord, in your mercy, you give us all we need in creation. Grant us the wisdom to care for the earth and all that is in it. And as the season of harvest begins, send favorable weather and keep safe all who will be working during this busy time. Be with all who are affected by Hurricane Florence, especially Michelle, Kier, and Xavier. Bless and strengthen all who are working to provide relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Bless leaders and citizens alike with the gifts of reason and perseverance. Embolden people around the world to seek the common good, to serve their neighbor and to work for justice and peace. Keep safe all who continue to serve and work to keep order in our world, especially Michael and all who serve in areas of conflict. Lord, in your mercy. 
Use us to bring comfort and aid to all who are homeless, hungry, naked, sick, or who suffer in any way in body, mind, or spirit. Especially do we remember those in assisted living and long-term care facilities. And also Kevin, Burl, Jerry, Lee, Marlo, Mariah, Jesse, Howard, Lori, Jim, Stanley, Jerry, Mark, Gail, Norman, Aaron, Sharon, Betty, Megan, Roger, Gordy, Jessica, Anders, Paulette, Joe, Verdon, Lauren, Natalie, Jeanette, John, Susan, Anders, Bella, Christopher, Dorothy, Terry, Glenn, and those we name silently in our hearts at this time. Strengthen us to be your presence as we care for all in need. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for the gift of marriage and companionship. Be with Katie and Andrew as they begin their life together and bless all couples and families. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for this congregation where we have found a home. Make us inviting an inviting beacon to all who seek community. Bless our outreach ministries and those who make them possible. Keep us always looking outward rather than inward. Lord, in your mercy. Into your wide embrace, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on each of you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and with kindness and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. You may be seated and we'll continue with our closing hymn, Go My Children with My Blessing, number 543.